Here's our panel. He's president of the Robin Hood Foundation and the New York Times bestselling author of Five Days, The Fiery Reckoning of an American City. Wes Moore back with us by Zoom. Hey, Wes. And he, he's an MSNBC political analyst and co-host of the weekly podcast, 2020 Politics War Room, the great sage of the Democratic Party, James Carville. James, great to see you. Great to see you both. I do see you through that little lens there. OK, so let's start with the big story. Biden has a 14 point lead over Donald Trump and not just the usual suspects, obviously winning big with young people, minorities, women. Uh, but also college educated, but also some of the uh, people we wouldn't have suspected. I mean, suburban white women doing well, men, suburban men, uh, the military not too crazy about them nowadays. In North Carolina, there was a primary Tuesday. The moderate who Trump was against beat the other guy that Trump was for by 32 points. I, I've never been this optimistic. James, let me start with the obvious question. How are the Democrats going to blow it? Uh, I don't know if we can do it. I, I mean, I, 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 I think of ways. I get up in the middle of the night and I said, "Now nah, that can't happen. Look, he's beaten. He's feeble. He's frail, frail. He's a failure. He's fat. He's going to think of the next F word that you want, you know, <laughs> something else. The question is not just to beat Trump. We have to eradicate Trumpism. The idea that Wes Moore and my children are fighting over a, a defined thing as opposed to an expanded view of what the country and the world is. And right now, we can beat Trumpism. Trump beaten. Forget it. He's done. No chance. But we got to win big enough that the Republican Party never wants to embrace this kind of toxic philosophy again. What, what worries you, uh... Wes, about this? I mean, it looks so good right now. What What's on your mind that is troubling? Voter suppression. What? Georgia. Georgia better get its act together. Kentucky had a primary. It went actually pretty doggone well. Georgia is 0 for 2 in elections, and they got to get their act straight because we're going to pick up two Senate seats in Georgia. We're going to win the president. But they're going to try to do everything they can to stop people from voting. They're going to do everything they can to have foreign influence on their, on their side, they're gonna do all of that. We are on guard, all right? We're posting sentries all over this country. There's so many lawyers around there you wouldn't believe. Well, they did it to us in 16, you know, not gonna do it to us in 20. We're, we're, we're up and running and ready to go here, Bill. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> You, yeah, you don't have to worry about winning. You just got to worry about winning big. Okay, Wes. No, but 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 actually, I I, I think you do need to worry about winning. And and the, and the reason I say that um, is is this is the election is still five months away. Uh, you know, when we think about it, look at where we were five months ago. And I don't think anyone could have predicted five months ago that we'd be where we are right now. You know, we saw that the election in 2016 was a cataclysmic event in American history. The coronavirus has been a cataclysmic event in, in, in American history, in world history. Uh, the movement we're seeing right now for Black Lives is a cataclysmic event in American history. And so I, I, actually, I, for, I actually don't think that November is any form of a slam dunk because the reality is it's still five months away. We have to be so deliberate on the points that you brought up, James on making sure that we're doing two things every single day going into these, the rest of this year. One is making sure that we're preserving the right to vote, but also two, making sure we're giving people something to vote for. Because that's gonna, those, those two factors right there are gonna determine how this election goes and what things look like the day after election day. Yeah, uh, Barr, the attorney general said, um, foreign countries can easily make counterfeit ballots. I don't know what that means. I don't know how they would do it. I don't know how they'd get them in the election. Even if you saw them, wouldn't you see the real ballot and then know something was afoot? It seems to me like these guys do know that they can't be beat. There are too many apartments have flooded on the Titanic. This is going to go down. And their only way is to cheat. Uh, you see it that way? I do. Absolutely. That's the only chance they have. I respectfully disagree with Captain Moore. He's a captain. I'm a corporal, so he outranks me. But <laughs> I, I, got some, I got I got some stripes from from campaign. But that's of course they're going to do that. And the reason that Barr is saying that 
is because they don't want to do mail-in ballots because they're scared people are going to vote. Right. That's what, that's, what, that's what's behind all of this. 